life in the old castle. Happy times them were. The people were all so much friendlier. How we feasted. And uh, courted the fair maidens as well. <coughs> there was work, of course, sharpening our minds. Making us strong. But mainly, I remember it as a happy time. Oh, yes. And then there were the neighbors. Greetings, sire. Your stronghold awaits you.
welcome to the Stronghold tutorial. This tutorial will teach you the techniques you need to know in order to get your castle up and running. The first task is to find a suitable place to build. To scroll around the map, use the camera movement keys. The first thing you need to do in Stronghold is find a suitable place to site your castle. Left click on the Saxon Hall building, then find a flat, empty piece of ground on the map. Move your mouse over the main screen until your keep appears. Once you're happy with the position, left click to place your keep. Wood has automatically been transferred from your starting goods into your stockpile. The wood is now available for you to use in your construction. In addition to the Saxon Hall and the stockpile, you should see a campfire. Move the mouse pointer over it. The halo that appears is your population growth indicator. The more popular you are, the faster it will fill and the quicker your population will grow. Every time the indicator makes one full rotation, a peasant will arrive and stand by the campfire until work becomes available. If the halo turns red, you are unpopular. The halo will then be showing you how quickly people will leave your castle. On the top left of the screen, you can see that there is plenty of food among your starting goods. But to use it, you'll need to build a granary. Left click on the granary building and move your mouse pointer in the area near the keep. When the granary building appears, left click to place it. The food in your starting goods will be transferred to the granary. Your peasants now have an ample supply of food to eat. Right click to exit the building. Then left click on the granary you've just built to bring up the granary panel. This panel lets you see your food details and allows you to make changes to your rationing. On the right of this panel, there are five plates with varying amounts of food on them. These symbolize the different ration settings, from no rations up to double rations. At the moment, rations are set to the default of full rations. Left click on the plate with the most food on it to set your rations to double. Due to your gen, you can view the rate of consumption by watching the speed of the bar in the granary. Or you simply see the units of food disappear from your granary on the map. Next, right click to leave the granary and left click on your Saxon Hall to bring up the keep panel. This panel lets you view your tax details and allows you to change your tax rate. You can set your taxes to anything from a generous bribe all the way up to a downright cruel tax. Taxes are currently set to the default of no taxes, so you're not gaining or losing any money. Left click on the right arrow until taxes are set to mean. You will now have a little gold coming into your treasury each month, but you're suffering a big hit to your popularity due to your mean tax rate. The scribe shows your popularity, gold and population size. His expression reflects your popularity. The report book he is holding will help you to find critical information about your settlement. The large number at the top shows your popularity rating. Left click on the report book. The reports panel is now visible. Left click on the popularity button. Here you see the effects of your actions on castle popularity for the coming month. Making changes to your tax rate and rationing are the two main ways of manipulating your popularity. With popularity over 50, people will come to the castle. Below 50, they will start to leave. Your tax rate and rations level will now be set to their original starting levels. Now, right click again to leave the report. Now you have a grasp of how to place buildings and manage your taxes, food and popularity, let's take a look at how to expand your settlement further. Running along the bottom of the screen are six shields. 
These are the building category buttons, which change the type of buildings displayed on the building selection scroll above them. Move your mouse pointer over these shields. The shields will highlight, and above the building selection scroll, you will see a description of the button. Left click on the industry building category, hammer. Click on the woodcutter's hut in the building selection scroll and build four woodcutter's huts close to the trees. Finally, right click to stop building. Good. Now you see that four of the peasants around your campfire have turned into woodcutters and are working at cutting down trees. Wood will soon begin to arrive in your stockpile. Now you need to start increasing your food stocks. Left click on your granary again. The amount of food you have left is shown in absolute units and also monthly supply. Right click to exit the granary screen. Left click on the farm building category, apple. Now place four hunters posts and the remaining peasants will become hunters. Good. When the hunters have prepared their meat, they will place it in your granary. Aim to have at least enough food coming in to cover demand. The bottom set of numbers on your scribe's report show your current population followed by your available housing. It is currently eight out of eight, which means the housing inside your Saxon hall is at full capacity. Click on the Town Buildings category, House, and build a hovel. Your available housing will increase and your population will begin growing again. Each hovel you build will hold up to eight people. Your settlement is growing, but so, of course, of a number of mouths to feed. Now, you will learn a few additional interface controls that are useful when playing the game. To rotate the map, move the mouse pointer into the middle of the screen, then press and hold the right mouse button. The camera interface icons will appear. Move the mouse pointer upwards onto the rotate icon. To zoom out, press the right button and move the mouse pointer to the right over the zoom icon and release the button. To zoom back in, repeat the process. Alternatively, use the mouse scroll wheel. To go full screen, press and hold the right button and move the mouse pointer to the left over the full screen icon and release. To go back to normal mode, repeat the process. To flatten the landscape, press the flatten key. Press the key again to bring the landscape back up. Alternatively, click and hold the right mouse button to bring up the camera interface menu for any of the camera controls. Congratulations, you have completed the tutorial. You are now ready to start the first mission of the Stronghold Campaign. Would you like to continue playing this map?